morning. A lot of people wonder what it's like for us to live with a composting toilet and they wonder what it's like to actually dump the buckets since most people just flush their toilets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dump a couple quick buckets for you and tell you about the process. So what I've done here is the first thing I've done is I've pulled our thermometer. We have a thermometer. I've pulled our thermometer out of the compost which was 120 degrees. I put it to the side. I then take the, um, the insulating straw and I push it to the side. And then I make an impression in the compost pile. And then the first thing I start with is we have our kitchen compost that goes in there. So I grab our kitchen compost. Most people do not believe this, but of everything, it's a kitchen compost that's a stinky one. And I give it a quick rinse. I will flatten it out quickly. Now comes the fun part. This is one of our toilet buckets. I dump it in. Very easy, very lightweight. I hold the bucket upside down. I take a peek in the bucket if it needs more rinsing. I give it more of a rinse. I dump it in. I give it a final rinse. When a bucket is done, I put some fresh shavings in the bottom. I put it back. And I grab the next bucket. So this morning, I've got 10 buckets. And 10 buckets should take me about 10 minutes. process uh, that we're using is a thermophilic process which means that because we had the right balance in the carbon, carbon and nitrogen that the compost pile gets very warm and it gets up to 120 it even gets up to 160 degrees and as it gets up it starts to kill all the pathogens that are in the compost E. coli, worm eggs, at 122 degrees Fahrenheit human pathogens are dead and 24 hours. At 140 degrees Fahrenheit, pathogens are dead in an hour. At 160 degrees Fahrenheit, pathogens are dead in about 15 minutes, 10 minutes. But, because the outskirts of the pile don't get that hot, it's a two-stage process. We let it do its thermophilic cycling for one year. So what I'll do is I'll have this one pile. Every week I'll add to it, and I'll do that for a year. And at the end of the year, I then let it sit dormant for a year. In that second year, it goes from being a thermophilic compost to a mesophilic compost, which is when the fungus and bacteria and critters come in because of the cooler temperatures, and they come through and they break down all the ligandins. And then at the end of that second year, the materials are actually safe to use in food gardens. We know this because, not just because we've read it, but also because we've taken samples and we've had them tested. And it's because of that research that we've also been able to build a composting toilet at the local lake. And uh, we also collect those nutrients and we compost them as well. And people wonder what it looks like. And I think on the camera you can see that it really doesn't look like a heck of a lot. It doesn't really stink. The, 
The carbon, the wood shavings that you see, we use for three purposes. One is it makes it look nice. So every time you go to the washroom, you put a scoop of shavings on top. So aesthetically, it's better. Uh, it also absorbs any moisture so it's not sloppy. And the third thing it does is it acts as a biofilter so it doesn't allow smells to escape out of the bucket when it's in the bathroom. And the fourth thing it actually does is it adds carbon to our mix. So because we need the, a balance of carbon and nitrogen for the thermophilic bacteria to become active, the shavings are our carbon. People wonder about what kind of things you can put into a thermophilic compost or a humanure compost. We have, we put everything, everything you're not supposed to put into a compost goes in here. So bones, meat scraps, eggshells, those things which are supposed to be a no-no, they all go in here. You can see some eggshells. One of the stories that we have is that we had a, uh, a chicken that was killed. And so we opened up the compost pile and put the chicken in. And four days later, I opened the pile up to put the buckets in. And the chicken was gone. Feathers were there, and bones were there, but nothing else was there. It didn't rot. It was digested. Because this uh, compost is thermophilic, it means it's also an aerobic compost. And aerobic means it has oxygen as part of the process of digestion. What that also means is it doesn't create methane, so you don't have a stinky compost either. And because it's not stinky, it doesn't collect rodents. A conventional garden compost that's not turned uh, compost without oxygen, and that's called anaerobic. And an anaerobic digestion is when you get methane. The costs of doing something like this are a lot cheaper than putting in a septic system. A septic system might cost you somewhere around $30,000. And a system like this might cost you about $15 per bucket. Because we've got six people here, we have uh, 10, 11 buckets. And then the cabinets, the, the composting toilet cabinets that we've made up out of wood inside each bathroom, uh, is probably about $75 each. Some of the rules about composting that are important is that you should always have a dedicated area. You should always have a dedicated hose and a hose nozzle that's not used for other things and you should have a dedicated rake. And um, if you have those dedicated items in a space, then you are safe to not have to worry about them being used in regular gardening. So as you can see, it's not a big process. It goes pretty quick. I don't have shit all over me. I never have yet. Maybe when I'm 90 and I pass out one day, who knows? But as you can see, it's pretty easy. In a few moments, we'll come back when I close up the pile, and you can see how I close up the pile. So we have all our buckets dumped, and it's time to close up the compost pile. So this is very easy. Flatten it out a little bit. Bring back some of the old straw that you push to the side. We do a lot of tours, so I like to ensure that it looks good for people. I then add more straw on top of it.
fresh straw goes on top. Welcome back. So here's what it's supposed to look like when it's all finished. The straw is on top. We put the thermometer back into the compost pile and we'll watch it get up to about 140 degrees. The rake that we used, we've rinsed the rake off so that it's nice, clean, put away. <clears throat> we've tidied up the buckets, put the lids back on the empty buckets so that, uh, we keep critters and we keep rain out of the buckets. And we've tidied up the compost from the kitchen with uh, shavings inside. And that's all there is.